Hello, I'm Dr. Kristen Lorenz, and I'm joining you today for the Arizona and Pima County coronavirus update and to discuss resilience, what it is, why it's important, and how to ramp it up during this stressful time of change and uncertainty. Our coronavirus numbers remain complex, but the bottom line is that Arizona continues to be a hot spot. The news that we may be stabilizing is not really reassuring for a couple of reasons. Our positivity rate continues to be high at 12.7. It's improved, but remember that the positivity rate needs to be less than 5% in order for us to be able to trust our case numbers with certainty. This means that it is probable that there are many more cases of COVID in our community than our case numbers indicate. And we still need more tests to be run in our community, test results to be received within one to two days, and tracing and isolation programs to really get a handle on transmission of the virus and to improve the safety in our community. The hospitalization rate is the measure with the shortest reporting lag time. And that number is down 8.8% this week in Arizona. This may indicate a plateau, but to plateau at such a high rate with only 15% adult ICU bed availability in the state is concerning, especially as we try to open schools and colleges in the next two weeks. Pima County continues to see episodic spikes in COVID hospitalizations. And as of August 31, there is a 10% adult ICU bed availability. Our positivity rate in Pima County is 16.3%. So we are also far from being able to really trust our case numbers and actual cases in our community probably outnumber those documented. Pima County has started free COVID testing with nasal swabs at the Kino Sports Complex and with saliva testing at Flowing Wells Community Center. These testing techniques have somewhat false, somewhat high false negative rate, but allow large numbers of tests to hopefully catch those who are infectious but not symptomatic. This means that if you're tested at one of those facilities and your test is negative, you may still have COVID and need to continue to practice those safe behaviors diligently. Isolate and call me if you're symptomatic. Otherwise, wear your face mask whenever you're in a public space. Avoid touching public surfaces. Avoid touching your face with uncleaned hands. Use hand sanitizer and hand washing regularly and clean surfaces regularly. Vaccine progress is being made as the phase three trial of the Moderna messenger RNA vaccine started last week with 30,000 participants. Treatment modalities are also slowly improving with combination medications and convalescent plasma. But the benefits are small and our greatest advantage continues to come from preventing the spread of this virus in our community. So we continue to practice those careful measures that are proven to keep us safe. In addition to the personal hygiene practices, it's important to avoid close spaces, large groups of people, and close contact with others. Grocery stores continue to be fairly safe as long as you wear your face mask and move through fairly quickly. But I remind you that you have many choices for shopping in Tucson. Choose those stores who are most strongly following the safety guidelines. If there are no guides on the floor for the six foot distancing, or if there is no one checking face masks, go to another safer store. Better yet, try curbside pickup or home delivery. In past vlogs, I've discussed quarantine fatigue and decision fatigue and talked about measures which help us survive difficult times. Today, more than ever, with the complexity of the pandemic and the economic, political, and racial unrest, the stresses are high for all of us. I'd like to go a step further today and discuss resilience, which is defined as the ability to withstand setbacks, adapt positively, and bounce back from adversity. Some people are more resilient than others, but resilience is not a personality trait that only some possess. On the contrary, it involves behaviors, thoughts, and actions that anyone can learn and develop. Being resilient does not mean that we won't experience difficulty or distress. In fact, 
The road to resilience is likely to involve considerable emotional and or physical challenges. Resilience is associated with longevity, lower rates of depression, and a greater satisfaction with life. It gives us a sense of control and leads us to feeling more positive in general. Lack of resilience means that we may not handle stress very well, and chronic stress has been linked to chronic inflammation, which we know plays a role in several chronic illnesses, including cardiovascular disease, increased cancer risk, and dementia, and also reduces our ability to resist infections, including this new coronavirus. To try to identify factors which contribute to resilience, a study was done with 1,004 U.S. adults. They were asked to complete assessments of resilience, mental health, daily behaviors, and relationships. Resilience was found to be greater among those who got outside more often, exercised more, perceived more social support from family, friends, and significant others, sleep better, and pray more frequently. It confirms that resilience in the face of this pandemic appears to be related to modifiable factors and is ultimately a process one has to continuously cultivate. Building resilience is like building muscle. It takes time and intention. The energy required for building resilience is like the battery of your car. We need to sometimes spend energy to get energy. Your battery recharges as you drive your car, and our bodies and our minds are similar. Rest is important, but if we have too much downtime or we choose activities which allow us to escape too much, we stall out and run out of gas. There are some clear practices which help us to recharge and build resilience. First, take care of your biological needs. Like a house needs a solid foundation to withstand the worst storms, your body needs that same foundation to weather the storminess of stress. This foundation is created by regular healthy meals, maintaining hydration, and regular sleep. We know that prolonged stress creates inflammation in the body and unhealthy foods contribute to that inflammation. To boost resilience, eat simple, nutritious meals that are easy to prepare. In times of stress, it is well known that many of us reach for the quickest, most comforting food we can find, and usually that includes sweets, processed starches, and high saturated fat foods. Though this is understandable, eating these foods too frequently actually contributes to the stress your body is experiencing and essentially makes the problem worse. In general, less healthy food makes us feel less healthy. You may notice upset stomach, mental fog or sluggishness throughout the day, or you may have trouble sleeping. We may find ourselves gaining weight, which may be okay for some, but that COVID-10 may be a source of stress and added inflammation for others. Healthy food reduces inflammation, physical and emotional stress, and depressive symptoms. It improves mental focus, decision-making, learning, and brain plasticity. I recommend that you focus as much as possible on making these foods the foundation of your nutritional intake. As you recall, these include all vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables and the cruciferous vegetables of the broccoli and cabbage family, berries, beans and legumes, sweet potatoes, fish high in omega-3 fatty acid, and those fermented foods like plain yogurt, kefir, kombucha tea, sauerkraut, and kimchi. Notice how your body and brain feel after eating and eat more of those foods that allow you to feel good. Many of you have shared that working from home and limiting social activities have provided time for more creative food planning and preparation and that you've enjoyed trying new foods. If that is not you and trying new foods feels too stressful right now, then keep it simple and stick to those healthy foods that you know you like. It's also worth mentioning that how you eat is important. Mindful eating is the opposite of stress eating. It involves mindful intention when planning, shopping for, and preparing food, as well as when you sit down to eat. Take a moment to focus on the appearance of the food. Notice the colors and the textures. With each bite, 
Notice fully the flavor of the food. Set down your fork as you chew. Pause after you swallow, then pick your fork up and take another bite. You might notice that this allows you to enjoy your food more, and you might realize that you're full at the appropriate time instead of when you are overstuffed, which often occurs when we eat too fast. This is not the time to go on a diet. This can contribute to your stress, and in the long run, we know that diets don't really work. It leads to judgment about the food that you eat and the guilt or shame that can result from eating some comfort food often leads to more suboptimal decisions. Focus on eating for well-being with those foods that you enjoy eating and that make you feel more energetic and mentally clear. Stay hydrated with regular water. Coffee, black tea, and soda pop do not count here. Flavoring water with mint leaves, lemon or lime wedges, or slices of ginger root are great ways to keep water interesting and tasty. Sleep hygiene improves mental processing and increases mental and physical stamina. Sleep deprivation increases stress, reduces the immune response, and increases difficulty with memory, attention, decision-making, and learning new information. It contributes to poor choices as we go for quick energy fixes with sugar, starch, and caffeine, and we feel too tired to exercise. To improve sleep, avoid caffeine and other stimulants like sugar and grain flour products. Reduce screen time in the evening for about an hour before going to bed. If you're not asleep in 20 minutes, get up and read a book or other relaxing activity for a few minutes before going back to bed. Sleep is a habitual behavior, so maintain regular sleep schedule. Be sure your bedroom is dark and relatively cool for easier sleep. The second factor which builds resilience is physical movement and exercise. It also strengthens the immune system, reduces depression, and the chance of becoming mentally paralyzed by stress. Several studies have compared exercise to psychotherapy and medication in the treatment of depression and exercise repeatedly was found to be an equally effective treatment. It appears that any type of exercise is helpful, including cardiovascular exercise, strength training, or more meditative exercise like yoga or Tai Chi. Our bodies were built to move, so do not make it optional. Consider exercise like brushing your teeth. I assume and I hope that you would not consider going through a day without brushing your teeth. Practice exercise and physical movement daily as well. Three, manage your thoughts and attitudes. Resilient people are skilled at looking at the upside of a difficult situation. They see the big picture, which prevents them from becoming hyper-focused on the details. Their actions reflect general movement forward. They are aware of their blind spots and know they cannot solve every problem on their own. Mastering a challenge often requires outside assistance, and resilient people aren't afraid to help ask for help. They often develop multiple plans because unexpected variables can impact their goals. This allows them to shift more easily to a new plan if needed and still obtain exceptional results. Resilient people are sensitive. They feel things at a very human level, and they value that quality. They remain open to new ideas and opportunities to foster growth. They are creative and make space for innovation. They create frequently and often do not share their process. They may write a song or a journal entry or paint on canvas just for their own enjoyment, as they know that many innovative solutions come from engaging in other unrelated creative activities. Resilience is promoted by choosing our words carefully and engaging in positive self-talk. Inner dialogue is important, and too much self-criticism can prevent strong, a strong recovery from challenging situations. Mistakes will happen, and it's important to experience disappointment without getting stuck in it. I may add here that if you find yourself unable to move beyond self-criticism, fear, anger, or irritability, you may be struggling with a deeper level of depression or anxiety, and it's important to reach out for help. Many psychotherapists work on the video platform and can be very helpful in helping you move forward emotionally.
I can facilitate this type of referral for you. Spending time alone is important for managing your self-talk and reflection is required for personal growth. Resilient people see alone time as an opportunity for getting to know their inner selves and not as stagnation. They enjoy learning without the distraction that others can sometimes create. Gratitude is the foundation of overall well-being. Even when a situation is dire, a sense of well-being is fostered by stating something that you're grateful for. This shifts your focus for even a brief moment, and that can lighten any load. Laughing immediately reduces stress hormones and inflammation and boosts the immune system. Our bodies immediately feel lighter and more open when we laugh. Watching funny movies or television programs, reading a funny book, or just forcing yourself to laugh can result in genuine laughter. Four, supportive relationships build resilience. It's important to be willing to take time and put forth the effort and communication needed for meaningful connections with others. Sometimes it's necessary to lean on a social network of friends and family to buffer the stress. And this can also help with problem solving as well. Schedule and protect time connecting with others and resist rescheduling those appointments. Connection may occur with direct conversation or may occur with a shared Zoom meal or a shared Zoom exercise class. Number five, spend time in nature and not just on your back patio. Go to a forest or a park, smell nature smells and listen to the sounds of nature. In the cool of the day, get some sunshine. Go watch a sunset, plant a garden, or just plant some flowers or herbs in a plant pot. Number six, recreational activities which just feel fun to you are critical for the balance needed for personal growth and resilience. These activities have no specific purpose other than just to make you feel happy. Number seven, a regular spiritual practice directly correlates with resilience. It may take the form of formal church affiliation and prayer, or a meditation practice, or just spending regular quiet time in nature. Meditation increases the parasympathetic tone of our nervous system, and that results in relaxation, rest, slower heart rate, slower respiratory rate, and improved digestion. Stress hormones are found to significantly drop during and after meditation. Yoga, Tai Chi, guided imagery, mindfulness meditation, and deep breathing exercises all seem to have a similar effect. And last but not least, helping others always contributes to resilience. It is that type of energy expenditure that returns to you multifold. Formal volunteer work or simply reaching out to support a friend or someone who's isolated or struggling builds strength and stamina in you. At this stage of the coronavirus pandemic, we need to do more than just survive. I challenge you to grow through this process. I hope some of these practices will be strongly integrated into your daily lives. Practice them with an attitude of loving and caring for yourself and with self-compassion, as this naturally results in more healthy practices and this is how resilience is built and maintained. I've included in this email some inspirational quotes about resilience, which you may want to place around your home and your workspace for reminders of the great possibilities amid this confusing and challenging time. I'm wishing that you always see the beauty in every day, for that is where the love is and that's where the peace is found. Thank you for joining me today. All my best to you. Bye-bye.